concept of a balanced tree um, and compare that to or contrast that with an unbalanced tree. Um, a balanced tree is, and, and we're here we're focused on binary trees. Um, a balanced tree is a tree that every level has the maximum number of nodes that it can have except for the last level, okay? So notice we have one node here at the root, then two, then four, then eight, and then we don't quite fill up this level, but that's okay, it's the last level. An unbalanced tree doesn't meet that criteria. So this is an unbalanced tree. Um, you know, we, we could have more nodes at this third level here than we do, and certainly fourth and fifth and so on and so forth. The reason why we care about trees being balanced is because it can have a significant impact on the performance of the algorithms that we run on our tree. Um, and so there's a whole set of algorithms out there that uh, rebalance trees, rearrange the nodes in the trees to balance out the trees so that these other algorithms can run more efficiently. Um, some, some other notes about balanced trees here. So this talks about how the height of the tree um, is related to the number of nodes. Um, and if it's completely filled, how, what the height of the tree is. And if it's, so basically, if the tree is balanced, the height of the tree is approximately log base two of the number of nodes in the tree, more or less. Um, this is at the heart of where a lot of this performance algorithm stuff comes from. Okay, so we're going to see that some of the algorithms that we can do um, are their performance, their big O, if you think back to the big O stuff, is like log N. Um, so some of these fast algorithms are fast because they're based on trees, and we take advantage of the fact that that tree is balanced. Algorithms to balance trees um, are beyond the scope of this class. Um, but they're not that bad. Like you could totally figure them out if you sat and played with them for a little bit. Um, so we're not going to worry about how to take an unbalanced tree and make it balanced. We're just going to be aware of the fact that to improve the performance of our algorithms, we want to have balanced trees. Okay. Um, and that the height of the tree is proportional to log of the number of nodes. Um, and that's going to be important as we start thinking about traversing trees and what is the maximum time it's going to take to get from the root to something we're looking for at a leaf. What we are going to focus on, though, um, is the idea of binary search trees and operations in, uh, related to binary search trees. And this is probably the hardest part of Chapter 17, in my opinion. Um, in terms of the, the code that we're going to write together today. But before we jump into these operations, let's just focus on what a binary search tree is. A binary search tree is a binary tree, just like we've been studying. That's good. Um, what makes it a binary search tree or a BST as opposed to just a binary tree is that the left and the right child um, have a relationship to that parent. Okay. So in this example, if we make it, this concrete example helps so much than a generic definition. Juliet is at the root of our tree. What that means is every node to the left of Juliet, every left descendant um, is less than Juliet when we compare these, the data, when we compare the elements. In this case, these elements are strings. So we mean alphabetically or lexicographically. Um, less. So Eve comes before Juliet, so Eve will be to the uh, left descendant. Romeo comes after Juliet alphabetically, so Romeo will be a right descendant. Okay. Similarly, Tom comes after Romeo, so Tom is a right descendant, not a left. Adam comes before Eve, so it's a left descendant. Eve comes, I'm sorry, Harry comes after Eve, so Harry is a right descendant. Okay. Um, you can probably see where this is going. If we have all these elements stored in a binary search tree, we can very quickly find something we're looking for, right? If we're trying to search for Harry and we start at the root and it's Juliet, we know we have to look, take a look at the left child and we can ignore the entire right subtree. And then when we get to Eve, we know we go to Eve's right child and we can ignore Eve's left subtree. 
Um, and that's how we can very efficiently, on the order of log n, find something in a binary search tree. So it's, it's kind of cool. So searching for something in a binary search tree, not too challenging. Um, that won't be too bad. Um, let's, uh, let's write some code together related to that. Um, and then we're going to work from, from there. So switching over to VS code. Um, in the chapter 17 class notes folder or project, go ahead and open up um, in the source folder binary search tree. Um, and I have some of the method headers um, and comments already written for us. We're going to fill these in as we go. Um, this is going to be very, very similar. Ah, bleh, hard to set talk. Very similar to the binary tree stuff we've already done um, with just a, a, a few modifications um, in terms of like how we structure like our node and then the insertion and, and removal is definitely different, but one step at a time. Let's start with the node. So through all these different trees we've been studying, we've always had this node class um, or even through the lists we've been studying, we've had this node class. Um, so this is a binary tree. So we're still gonna have a left node and a right node. Um, but because this is a binary search tree, yes, we're going to have data, but that data can't just be of type object. The data has to be comparable. So our first instance variable is going to be of type comparable, and we're going to call it data. Um, thinking, you know, a little bit going back to AP computer science, comparable is an interface. If you implement the comparable interface, you have to implement the compare to method um, that can be invoked on your object and another object is passed as a parameter. And if the two objects are equal, it returns zero. If the one object is less than the other, it returns a negative integer. If one object is greater than the other, it returns a positive integer. So the reason why these things have to be comparable is we can't search through a binary search tree nor determine where to insert a node if we can't compare the different elements. So that's why we're not using object, we're using comparable. We also want left and right, just like we had before. And we'll leave it like that. So that's what our node is going to look like. When we worry about insertions, we're going to come back and implement this later. But let's first, I think it's easiest to first focus on um, searching. Finding a, an element in our tree. So let's scroll up here to the find method. Um, the find method tries to, returns true or false based on if the object is, is in the tree. Um, so it has a Boolean return type. It takes a single parameter, which is the object we're searching for, the element we're searching for. It has to be of type comparable as well um, as, we, as we go. So we'll get rid of the return false and we will write the code together to search through the tree. Um, we need a local variable that can reference the node we're currently looking at, we're currently comparing to. So let's create a local variable called current and assign it to the root to start. Did I define root? I did, okay. So we're gonna start at the top of the tree and we're going to go through what, what I just talked through in terms of the, the image. Um, so we're going to create a little while loop here because it's possible that this uh, element isn't even in our tree. So we're gonna say while current is not equal to null, um, we're gonna figure out which way to go. So we're at a given node. We start at the root, but we're at a given node. We want to compare um, the object that is specified to the current node. So I'm gonna store this in a variable because um, it makes debugging easier and some of this code easier to write. So I'm gonna, on this object that's passed as a parameter, 
I'm going to call the compare to method. And we're going to compare to the current node's data. Not the current node itself, right? We want our types to match. Um, the parameter here is the data itself, right? Of type comparable. We want to compare data to data, element to element, not an element to a node. So there's three possible options when we invoke the compare to method. The first option is that the difference could be equal to zero. That means we just found the element. Simply return true. We found it in the tree. Good to know. Another option is that the difference could be less than zero. In that case, the thing we're looking for is less than the current element. So we need to go left in the binary search tree. All right, so if we're searching for Eve and we're at Juliet, Eve is less than Juliet. We're going to get a negative number here. We need to go left at the node. So here we're going to say current, oops, sorry, current equals current dot left. If it's not equal to zero and the difference is not less than zero, the difference, whoa, must be greater than, greater than zero. And so we'll just say current equals current dot right. We need to go down the right subtree branch. The, either eventually we're going to find the element in the tree and we're going to return true or Current's going to be null because we get to a leaf node who's left or right child. I know, not necessarily a leaf, um, but we're going to get to a node who doesn't have a left or a right child. Current's going to be set to null. Our loop will end. We will return false. That's all it takes. That's all it takes to search a binary search tree. To connect this back to something we've studied before, if you think about like this find method where you're specifying the thing you're looking for and you just want to know if it's in the tree or not, this is exactly the operation we did on a set, right? If you want to check if an element is in a set, you may re no, well, hope you remember set. We can either have a hash set, which uses hashing functions. That's an extension. Um, or we can have a tree set. A tree set is a binary search tree. Okay, so now we actually know what a tree set is. It's just a binary search tree. It's not quite as fast as hashing, which is order one. It's order log n, but it's still pretty fast. Um, and the find method we just wrote is like the method you're gonna see in a, in a tree set. Um, just check if something is in the set or not, which is pretty cool. Um, in fact, all the methods we're gonna write today like our add method we're about to write and the remove method um, are also just like the methods that would be in a tree set. So, cool. Questions, comments, thoughts at this point about searching a binary search tree? <coughs> All right, well, let's take a look then at the next step. Let's say we want to insert the element Romeo into the binary search tree, which would be the same as adding the element Romeo to our tree set. So if we're adding the ro element Romeo, we have to find where in this tree does it go. Um, and so we do that at first with a similar algorithm as we just did for find. We compare Romeo against the root. Romeo comes after Juliet, so we go to the right child. We compare Romeo against the right child. Romeo comes before Tom. But if Tom has no left child, then that's where we put Romeo. So we basically traverse our tree like we're searching until we find um, a left or right child where we would want, which is null. And then instead we replace it with a new node with this element.
not too bad. Let's see what it looks like in terms of code. So this will look this will look familiar to what we just wrote, um, but a little bit different. So here's the add method right above. Inserts a new node into the tree. The parameter obj is the uh, element that we want to insert into the tree. And so uh, our first step is we need to wrap that element in a node. So we need to make a new node. So we'll create a local variable new node. And we'll make a new node just like we've done before when we've done addition operations on our various collections. We'll initialize all the fields here of new node. New node data equals obj. New node dot left equals null. New node dot right equals null. Yeah, I know they're already initialized that way, but I like to be explicit. Um, in general, we're going to defer the actual addition of a new node into the tree um, to the node class itself. But we do need to check for a special condition here before we can do that. It is possible that our tree is empty and this is the first node being added. So we need to check for that special case. If this dot root equals null, that means the tree is empty. This new node becomes the root. That's pretty easy. Otherwise, it's a little bit more complicated. So we do have a root. We're going to invoke the add node method on that root and pass along the new node. So if we already have a node, we're basically going to tell that the root, hey, root, here's a new node. You figure out where to insert it. And if you're thinking to yourself, this smells recursive, you are right. Um, this is definitely going to be another one of our recursive algorithms. Trees are very naturally lend themselves to recursive algorithms. So let's go write the actual meat of this algorithm, which is the add node part. So we're going to scroll all the way down to the node class that's at the bottom of this file. And here's the method header for the add node method we're going to work on. Um, and this is going to insert a new node as a descendant of this node. Um, and as you suspect, and as I said, we're going to do it recursively. So we need to figure out whether it goes left or right. Um, we're, again, keep in mind, we're implementing this like a tree set. So if we try to add a node that's already in the tree, that's fine, just nothing's gonna happen. We're not gonna put any duplicate in, okay? So keep that in mind as we write this algorithm. Duplicates are fine, we're just gonna ignore them. Um, so we're really only focused here on, is the node we're trying to insert, or rather is the data associated with the node we're trying to insert, less than or greater than the data of the current node? That's all we're focused on. So let's capture that in a variable called diff. We're going to say new node dot data dot compare to, and we're going to compare it to data, which is this node's data. Um, I get confused sometimes, and so I like to be really consistent as I'm writing these algorithms. I'm always going to take the thing we're inserting and call the compare to method on that and pass the thing that's already in the tree as a parameter. Because that way in my head, I know that if I get a value back less than zero, I go left. And if it's greater than zero, I go right. The order in which you do these things is important, right? If you were to say data dot compare to new node dot data, your left and rights get swapped. So my advice is just be consistent. Always take the thing you're inserting and call compare to on that and pass the thing already in the tree as the parameter. And that way left means negative and right means positive and it's consistent. So, so if it is negative, if diff is less than zero, what do we do? Well, we go left, but we got to check, right? So there's two options here. Either there's a whole left subtree for us to search or there is no left child and we're done. So if left is null, we're done. Left is now gonna be assigned to that new node. We're finished. Otherwise, we're not done. Time for some recursion. We'll call the add node method on that left child 
and pass along new note. If there is no left child, great. That's where the new node goes. If there is a left child, now it's that child's problem. It will figure out where to add the new node. Call it recursively. The else if case, and it has to be else if, it can't be else, because if the difference is zero, we don't want to do anything. Else if the difference is greater than zero, extremely similar code, but now we're going right. If right equals null, great, we're done. Right equals the new node. Otherwise, we're not done, and it's the right child's problem to figure out where to put the node. So we'll invoke add node on the right child. I've written this out very like explicitly and kind of long, but I want it to be like super clear like what the algorithm is doing. So even though there, there, there's a lot of there's several lines of code here, like, right, it fills the screen. There's not that much going on, right? We're just comparing two elements. We're either going left or right. We got to check if it's null or not. That's it. It's not that hard to insert a node into a binary tree. Now, again, one thing, again, this is beyond the scope of the course, but one thing just to keep in mind is you can imagine the order in which we insert nodes into a binary tree is going to affect how balanced that tree is, right? Um, a worst case scenario would be that um, you insert a long series of nodes into a binary search tree, and those nodes are already in alphabetical order, right? That would be the worst possible binary search tree, right? Because it would just be um, a right child after a right child after a right child after a right child, and would, would be the most unbalanced tree we could make. Um, that said, there are algorithms out there that can take a binary search tree and, and rebalance it, which is kind of cool. Um, I'll check the textbook. I, it might be at the end of this chapter. I can't remember if it's in this book or not, but, but they definitely exist. I'll find some resources um, and share those in like the extension parts of the page. All right, um, let's look at the next part. Well, actually, let's pause here. Questions, comments on the algorithms we've written so far? All right, so we're done with the good news. Now we're on to the bad news. Removing a node from a binary search tree is not easy, okay? There are several different cases we have to handle. Um, so I'm going to show you those graphically first, and then we're going to figure out to write the code for it. Even though this isn't easy, and there's several different cases, if we just focus on one case at a time, the code for each case isn't that bad, okay? Even if we end up with something kind of um, long and involved when we're done. So um, with this series of, of diagrams I'm about to show you, the node to be removed is a lighter shade of red. Um, and so this, the node that we want to remove from a binary search tree could be anywhere in the tree. So we're gonna go through several different cases based on where that node is. Case one is, a, is the easiest, right? If the node to be removed is a leaf and has no, that is it has no children, well, great, let's just find its parent um, and tell its parent whether it's, you know, it's, it's either going to be the left or right child, tell the parent just to set right, in this case, to null. We're done. Node removed. Super easy if it's a leaf. Okay. All right. Well, what if it's not a leaf? If the node to be removed has a single child, doesn't matter if it's left or right, we just know it's a single child, um, it's not too bad, but it's a little bit more involved. We can't just get rid of this node because we want to remove this node, not this entire subtree. Its child still needs to be in the tree when this node is gone. Now, in this example, the node to be removed is the right child of its parent. That means all of its children, all of its descendants are greater than the parent as well. 
because if they weren't, they wouldn't be in the right subtree, right? We would have inserted them somewhere else. So what that means is if the node to be removed has only one child, doesn't matter if it's left or right, whichever one isn't null, we'll just make that child the new right child of the parent. And the tree will still be valid, right? Because all of these nodes are greater than the parent. Okay, so not, not too bad. All right, then there's case three. Case three is the worst case scenario. In case three, hold on, I'm thinking through this. Do, 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 do. No to be removed. Oh, okay, this light, the color is off. That's what threw me. All right, sorry. Um, yeah, I don't know why my coloring's bad here. Here's the node to be removed. This case three is the worst because this node has both a left child and a right child. So we can't simply go to the parent and be like, oh, uh, here's your new right child because you can't have two of them, right? We got to do something. So here's the algorithm that we take. Um, we need to find the smallest child, the smallest descendant in the right subtree. Because the smallest descendant in the right subtree, if we swap it with the node we're going to delete, then all of the left descendants still come before it because this descendant was in the right subtree. And all the other descendants in the right subtree come after it because we found the smallest one. Okay. We could also find the greatest child in the left subtree and do the same thing, right? They're the same approach, but we're going to focus on finding the smallest child or the least ch child, I should say, in the right subtree. We're going to find that node and we're going to move it up here, which might mean we have to also, it might have its own children. Um, it's not going to have a left child because if it did, that child would be the smallest, but it could have a right child, in which case we got to like reroute this link as well. Okay. So case three is just a mess, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. All right, back to case one. Let's give this a shot. Case one, it's a leaf. We're just gonna set the reference to null and be done with it. All right, remove. So we're gonna scroll up to the remove method. Here it is. It takes the object we wanna remove from the tree. And so we're going to need a couple of local variables here to help us out. Um, we need to find this, the node with this data in our tree. That's step one. So I'm going to create a local variable called to be removed of type node, and I'm going to initialize it to the root. That doesn't mean we're going to remove the root necessarily. It just means we're going to start at the root. We're going to search the tree. And when we're done, to be removed will refer to the node we want to remove. We, we need to do more than just find the node. We need to also know its parent. So we got to keep track of the parent of each node as we traverse through this tree. And then finally, we kind of need to know, did we find it or not? Because maybe it's not in the tree. And like when it comes to a tree set, if you remove something not in the set, it's not an error. We don't throw an exception. We just say, okay, not there. We don't care, whatever. So we're going to model that behavior. All right, there's our local variables. We are set up. First step here is we have to find the node that we want to remove and its parent. So we're going to write a little algorithm here, um, which is pretty much like what we wrote in find. It'd be nice if we could just call find, but find doesn't keep track of the parent, so we kind of have to rewrite the algorithm. So here's our while loop. While we haven't found what we're looking for, and the current node that we're checking, which is to be removed, is not equal to null. Let's look for it. Let's find the difference between the object we're searching for and the current node's data. If that difference is zero, woohoo, we found it. Found equals true. We are done. 
if you're like, wait a minute, what about parent? We didn't update parent. Well, either we found it right away and the root is the node we're looking for and therefore it has no parent, or this isn't the first time through this loop and we would have initialized parent. So hang in there, it'll be okay. If we didn't find it, we have two options. But before we go left or right, let's remember who the parent is. Set parent to be two to be removed because we're about to change the value of to be removed to either the left or the right child. If the difference is less than zero, we're going left. So to be removed is gonna equal to be re whoa, to be removed dot left. Otherwise we're going right to be removed, to be removed dot right. So this little while loop here, will find, if the node is in the tree, it will find it. And when it does, to be removed will refer to that node and parent will refer to its parent. And if the node isn't in the tree, that's fine. Um, this loop is gonna end and found is gonna equal false. So first step of this algorithm is simply finding the node. Second step. Actually, let's just take care of the case of if found is false and just return. So if not found, return, we're done. It's not an error to try to remove something from a tree set um, that isn't in the set. We don't have anything else to do. All right, let's look at the picture again. It's been a little while. Here's case one. We found the node to be removed. We're just gonna set the parent to um, null, right? or the parent's right child to null here. However, let's, let's also look at case two. Here's case two. In case two, the node to be removed only has one child, either left or right. And so we're gonna set the parent's right child to the node to be removed child. We can actually combine case one and two, they're kind of the same. Because case one is really just a special case where both the left and the right child are both null. So if we just assign the left child or the right child of the node to be removed to the parent's right child, that also sets it to null. So we don't really have to write special code for case one and case two. We can do both of them together. So let's see what it would look like if we combine them. So I'm gonna put a little comment here saying, um, this is for, case one and two. So we've already found the node. We need to know if it's case one or two, right? Because there's still this, there's still the scary case three out there. So let's make sure we're case one or two. If to be removed dot left is equal to null or to be removed dot right is equal to null. If either child is null or both, it's case one or two. Excellent. So let's figure out who the new child is. We'll have a little variable to keep track of that. Uh, it depends on whether it's left or right. So if to be removed dot left is null, so if the left child is null, the new child is the right one. And if they were both null, that's okay. We're just gonna assign null to new child, which is what we wanna do for case one. Else, the new child is going to be to be removed dot left. Because the right child must have been the one that is null. So now we know what the child is. It's either an actual reference to a node or it's null. All right, so we have a couple things to check here. Uh, we still have a special case that's possible at this point that the parent could be null. If the parent is null, then guess what? 
that new child is the new root. Congratulations. If the parent isn't null, we need to know, wait, is the node to be removed the left or the right child? Because it depends on what we update, right? So else if parent.left equals to be removed, hey, the thing that we found is actually the left child of its parent. So we will update parent.left to now refer to the new child instead. Otherwise, That is so weird. There's one and else. There we go. Otherwise, parent.right will equal the new child because the to be removed node must have been the right child. And once we do this, we are done. Let's get out of here. So a little bit of code to handle case one and two. But not an overwhelming amount. I think it lines up with the diagram pretty well. Handles all the special cases. And we're going to stop here for today for sure. Because the third case is going to be a little bit more complicated. All right. So it's been a few days with the weekend. So we were working our way through the remove method. Um, and the first thing we had to do in this remove method is find the specified object. Um, remember, as we write this binary search tree, we could use this class to implement like a, a tree set. Um, and so when we remove something from the set, we need to see if it's there. If it is, we'll get rid of it. If not, that's fine too. So the first step was searching through the binary search tree to find the element to remove. And so we had code similar to find um, that we wrote previously to decide whether we go left or right until we find the thing. Um, but the other thing we're keeping track of as we go is, is a reference to the parent node. That is the parent of the node we're removing. We need that in order to um, put our tree back together after we remove um, the element, the node. Um, so we wrote the code first to just find the node and its parent. And then we wrote code to handle case one and two. And in terms of case one and two, We'll keep this up so we can refer to it. Case one was where the node to be removed was a leaf node. So that was really easy. Um, and case two wasn't so bad. Case two was where the node to be removed only had one child. And so we could replace um, the link from the parent to the node to be removed to the parent to the node to be removed single child. Um, and that's the code we've written so far. What we're gonna tackle today um, is case three, which is a little bit more challenging. So we talked through it conceptually um, before, but to go through it again, um, what if the node to be removed um, has two children? Okay, we can't just get rid of this node. What's going to happen to all these descendants? Um, we can't simply link that node's parents to one of the descendants because or one of the children in their subtree, because then what happens to the other one? So the approach we take is we basically need to swap the node to be removed with some other node that we can put in this position in the binary search tree, such that the binary search tree still makes sense. Um, and the algorithm to do that is if we follow the right subtree and we find the least node in the right subtree, that node can be swapped with a node to be removed and everything else works. Because if this is the least node in the right subtree, then everything else in the right subtree comes after it. Um, and because it is in the right subtree, we know everything in the left subtree comes before it, so that totally works. We could also find the greatest child in the left subtree, right? Conceptually, it's the same idea. But we're going to take the smallest, the least child in the right subtree, because that's what the book does. Um, so at least we're consistent with, with that. So let's take a look at the code to handle case three. So we're going to pick up here where we left off. I'm going to label that this is case three. Or be clear like where we are. So neither subtree of the node to be removed is empty. So that's case three in that it has two children. 
So we're going to break this up into small pieces. And, and again, this is like kind of a running theme throughout this whole unit, probably this whole course. Um, this is a, this whole removal of a node from a binary search tree is a really sophisticated algorithm. But if we break it into really small chunks, each chunk isn't so bad, right? Like finding the element to remove that we did first, like that's not so bad. Um, so let's just do the first step. Let's just find the least element of the right subtree. That doesn't sound so bad. We can write code to do that. Um, as we go, we do need to keep track of this node's parent because the smallest child in the right subtree could have its own right child. It can't have a left child because if it did, that child would be the, the least node. Um, but it might have a right child. And if it does, we need to fix up the link from its parent to its child instead. So we got to do this reroute link thing. So let's, uh, we'll keep track of that. So we're going to need a couple of variables here. Um, let's keep track of, oops. Let's keep track of the node's parent. So we're going to have least parent, and we're going to set that to to be removed. That's maybe the node. Um, because the node to be removed could be the parent. Um, then let's also keep track of the least node. And that's going to be to be removed dot right. Because we're going to find the least node of the right subtree. And then we'll keep searching. So we'll say while least dot left is not equal to null. As long as there's a left child, keep going. Set least parent to least and set least to least.left. When this loop finishes, least will refer to the least node in the right subtree and least parent will refer to its parent. Um, so that's, that's worth actually putting the comment here for. So least refers to the least child in the right subtree, just to be clear with what we've got. So at this point, we're gonna swap that least element with the node to be removed data. So we're just going to swap the data because we want to keep all the links in place. So we're going to just say move the data. So to be removed dot data is now going to equal least dot data. So we've swapped the data. And then let's look at the picture again. So we swap the data from here to here, so that's good. But now we got to deal with the fact that it might have a child, right? Um, and there's a couple different cases here. The least child in the right subtree could be down here somewhere, and we want to link this to this, right? So we got to update its parent's left link to be its child. But the least child in the right subtree could be this node if it has no left children in which case his parent is the node to be removed, in which case we're updating its right child, not the left child. So we got to handle the special case. So let's check for that. So I'm going to say, oops, I'm going to say unlink unlink the least child so it's special case, if the least parent is the node to be removed, well, in that case, we need to update the reference to the right child. So I'm going to say least parent dot right equals least dot right. So we fix that up that way. Otherwise, we're farther down in the tree. So we'll say least parent dot left equals least dot right. That handles, this handles our special case where the least node is the right child of the node to be removed.
And that covers the part, the third case.